You have to be strategic about the different platforms that you're putting your content on. YouTube is not a podcast listening app, so you cannot treat it like a podcast listening app. It needs to have its own strategy. It needs to have its own SEO and its own background research that you're doing when you are putting your podcast on to YouTube. You have to be strategic about it or you're not gonna get the results that you want and it's gonna be a waste of your time, which I definitely don't want to see you waste your time. Welcome to another episode of Listeners to Leads, where I'm helping podcasters launch and maintain a lead generating show. I'm your host, Alicia Galati, the CEO and head podcast strategist behind Galati Media, a full service podcast management company. On this show, you'll hear my guests and I discuss everything it takes to launch a successful podcast and keep it running. If you're ready to get leads, land speaking gigs, and create deeper connections with your audience through your podcast, then this is the show for you. Today, we are going to talk about putting your podcast on YouTube, the pros, the cons, the do's, the don'ts, and the mistakes that people tend to make when they put their podcast on YouTube. All right, so let's talk some stats, first things first, jumping in. Then we'll go into the do's and don'ts. Edison Research is a really big publication. They do a ton of research on statistics and what people are listening to, what people are ingesting for information, and that kind of thing. So they have a yearly podcasting thing that they put out that is really informational. And so in 2021, their stats said that 18% of podcast listeners say that they use YouTube more often than podcast apps in order to listen to podcast content. So in my mind, and I, you know, I'm all about accessibility and making sure that your content is available for everyone and making sure that your podcast is available for those who have disabilities. But 18% for a very different platform than podcasting is. So YouTube is a video first search engine. That's what it is. So it is a search engine searching videos. It is not a search engine for audio. And so there's a lot to it that you guys can't see me, but I'm kind of like scrunching up my shoulders and I'm like, oh, I don't like it. (laughs) I love YouTube. I personally do not listen to podcasts on YouTube. I also don't listen to a lot of podcasts because I find myself in very (laughs) Virgo energy, Enneagram One energy, trying to edit it in my head. And that's just really distracting from the actual content. So I don't listen to a lot of podcasts, but when I did listen to a ton of podcasts, I didn't listen on YouTube. That wasn't really a place where I went to search. Now, Edison Research said that 18% of podcast listeners listen to podcasts on YouTube or watch podcast content on YouTube. Cool. They also said that 50% of that 18% say that they use YouTube to search for new podcasts. That's a really small percentage. I'm kind of saying all this to say because I see in the Facebook groups that I'm in at least once a week, someone is saying, I want to put my podcast on YouTube. What should I do about that? Or how do I do that? And there's so much information and there's so many opinions. And you know how I feel about things. There's like the right way to do them, which is usually my way. And then there's all the wrong ways to to do things. And I'm going to try to tell you what I believe is the right way to do it. This is the way we do it for our clients. And hopefully it is easier for you as a solopreneur, because most of you are not at the point where you can hire a whole production team, and you don't have the resources yet to be able to offload those things for your podcast. So that's kind of the nitty gritty looking at the stats, who is actually on YouTube, who is actually listening to podcasts on YouTube. I also want to note that 
This year, YouTube did come out with a huge packet of a presentation of like things that are coming in the YouTube space around podcasts. And I think that it's their response to Spotify, which Spotify is going to be adding in more video elements to their platform. If you are someone who uses something like Anchor, which is owned and affiliated very heavily with Spotify, then they do have ways where you can add that video element to your podcasts, or at least I believe they do. I am not on Anchor. I don't recommend them. I don't promote them. So I try not to like look at what they're doing. But from what I understand and the direction that Anchor Spotify kind of connection is going is that they are trying to add in more of a video element in the coming years. So I believe that this is YouTube's way to counteract that. Now, where I don't understand it exactly is that YouTube already does this. So a lot of those podcasts like Joe Rogan were on YouTube almost exclusively. And so to add in this part, I think that it really is just with Joe Rogan going to Spotify and all of these other big names moving over to Spotify. I believe it's their kind of counter quote unquote attack in order to try to gain more traction on YouTube. So if you are looking at kind of doing that, it looks like they are trying to invest in it. But with YouTube being a search engine, with it being a video first platform and them having all of their AI stuff kind of quote unquote watch the episodes and watch the content, there are some things that you're going to want to ensure that you do and some mistakes that I definitely see people make. So let's talk some of the mistakes that I see people make, and then I'll go through some of my recommendations on how to not make those mistakes. The first mistake that I see people make when they are trying to put their podcast on YouTube is that they slap an audiogram on YouTube of their entire episode. That's mistake number one. It's fine if you want to put your whole podcast episode on YouTube. But to have an audiogram where it is literally just a still frame photo with maybe an audio wave, maybe you've got some captions, that is not going to get as much traction on a video first platform because they're going to be like, I'm just going to quote unquote watch this person. I'm doing lots of quotes today. (laughs) I'm just going to watch this person talk, except I'm not watching them because there's no person here. And when YouTube looks and sees, hey, there's no talking head and there's no animation and there's no movement other than a very organized wave, then they think, oh, well, this isn't really a video that people are going to enjoy. This isn't really a video that people will sit down and watch. So we're going to kind of blacklist it. And if your videos on YouTube get blacklisted enough times, they're not going to show you new content. So if you revamp your YouTube strategy and you do it correctly, they're going to be like, "Uh, yeah, no, (laughs) it's going to take you longer to be able to get the traction that you're trying to get. And that's going to be really annoying for you and really frustrating. And let's just totally nix all of that. So if you are thinking about using an audiogram and I know that they're, uh, I want to like bash my head against the wall. Not literally. I'm not going to do that. But in frustration, it is very frustrating when I see podcast hosting platforms have this quick two button click to get your podcast on YouTube. It's not helping you. It does not in the long run help you gain more listeners, get traction on YouTube, You have to be strategic about the different platforms that you're putting your content on. YouTube is not a podcast listening app. So you cannot treat it like a podcast listening app. It needs to have its own strategy. It needs to have its own SEO and its own background research that you're doing when you are putting your podcast on to YouTube. You have to be strategic about it or you're not going to get the results that you want and it's going to be a waste of your time, which I definitely don't want to see you waste your time. So what should you do instead? I'm going to break it down very simply 
very strategically on what you should do and can do, especially if you're already recording the video version of yourself talking. Now, for my solo episodes, I do not record the video version of me talking, mostly because I don't want to, (laughs) right? If I were to do some solo episodes and I wanted to throw those on YouTube, then I would probably do my makeup, do my hair, make sure the lighting was all right, and do just a regular video for YouTube instead of doing my podcast episode onto YouTube. That's a whole other side thing. But let's go back to the step by step because I'm getting distracted with like all of the different nuances of it. So what I recommend people do is put unique content on YouTube. This could be a clip of your podcast or you talking about an episode. Here's an example. If it's a guest episode, then take 10 minutes or less of a really great section of your podcast episode where you ask a great question, your guest gives a great answer. Make sure that you edit it and make sure you add an intro with like what the episode title is, what the podcast is, the episode number, and then have an outro at the end where it's just like a graphic that tells them where they can listen to more of the episode. So it is a complete, almost pull out from the full episode content. When you do a solo episode, instead of recording the entire episode from your webcam, which is something that you can do that is definitely an option if you are feeling like, hey, I can do this in one take. I personally cannot. I talk to my team throughout my podcast episode. They cut it all out for you guys because they're incredible, (laughs) but I tend to say things like, wait a minute, I didn't mean that, or nope, take that out, or wait, I need to restart that. So I know that trying to create a video from my podcast episode is going to be highly edited. Obviously, I can do it. I have a video editor on my team, and I can have her do that, but my focus is not YouTube right now, so that's why I'm not on there. But if I did decide to, or, you know, we do have clients where they do tend to put their episodes on YouTube, I believe we have four right now that do that. Some of them have different strategies based on what they had been doing up until the point where they joined with us. And some have different strategies based on them launching with us. And so we kind of started them off with what we believe is the right strategy And kind of just looking at what the differences are with people who have their entire podcast episode up versus those who have a smaller snippet of it. So you get that video content, you get it edited for YouTube, meaning you've got all those different elements that it needs, that intro card, that outro card, those extra links that you need to have placed in there. There's a lot of different things that you're going to need, making sure that your title is optimized for SEO, just like your podcast episode title should be. You're going to have some pretty simple show notes in there. And then at the bottom, having a learn more at and then a full website link. Now, that is just like a quick down and dirty way for you to do it. So if that's what you're trying to do and you're like, look, I just want to put my podcast on YouTube. What's the best way to do it to get the most traction? That's going to be a starting point. From there, because it doesn't just stop with having your podcast up on YouTube. You want to make sure for SEO that you also are putting that YouTube video on your website and you can add it in to a very good blog post, written blog post about the topic. So one thing that we do for our clients is we write pretty extensive show notes and make sure that they are good and optimized for search engines. And then sometimes if it's a solo episode, we'll actually take their written script and turn that into a blog post. Or some clients like to take their transcripts and turn them into a fully written blog post. It's a great strategy to do. And we've definitely seen people get a lot of traffic through Google this way. So you have a nice, decent blog post. At the very top, you're going to have that YouTube video. So it'll have like one paragraph, which is going to be like your intro paragraph, and then your YouTube video. And then a little bit further down, 
You can have your embed code for your podcast episode. And that way, Google can kind of link around, right? And it's kind of looking at where all of this content is in your sphere where people are searching for this topic. So it'll say, hey, wait a minute. This person has a video on YouTube. They also embedded it on their blog post on this website, which is a good and safe website. Awesome. Cool. This also is attached to this podcast episode which we have on Google Podcasts, so we're going to promote that as well. And so it's almost like this circle of information for Google to find, and they end up saying, oh, okay, this is all valid information and accurate information, so let's go ahead and drive it up higher on the search engine. I hope that makes sense, because I'm, I feel like it is a bit of a circle of like, this looks at this, and this looks at this, and this looks at this, and so it can feel a little overwhelming. What I'm trying to say is creating that decent blog post, embedding your YouTube video on there to kind of show YouTube and show Google that this is married to this, and then embedding your podcast episode so that way people who find your website, if they aren't really the video watchers, maybe you have your episode promoted on Pinterest and you have a pin out there, someone finds your pin, they click it, they see the blog post, you're giving them all these different ways to take in the information. So if they like video, there's a video. No, it's not the whole episode, but it's still a decent enough chunk where they can get an idea of who you are, what you're about, and maybe if they want to listen to your podcast, then they can listen to the full episode. You also have the written blog post for those who maybe don't have time to watch a video or don't have time to listen to a full episode and they just kind of want to skim read. And then you also have the audio element where people can find your podcast episode on their favorite podcast listening app. So it kind of creates this interweb for them to decide what they want to listen to and also for Google to kind of understand what your topic is about and be able to connect the dots on their end. So that's what I recommend that you do when it comes to putting your podcast on YouTube I don't think that it is the best strategy for solo podcasters or like indie podcasters. If you have a team helping you, then that's going to help. If you have a podcast episode that is maybe shorter or you release every other week or once a month, then something like that might make sense for you. But if you're releasing an episode every week, don't feel like you have to also be on YouTube. Don't throw something on YouTube and hope that it's going to work. Be strategic about it and really take the time and the effort to figure out if it is the strategy for you and if it is something that is actually going to be interesting for you and valuable for you. Also, poll your audience. Ask them if they watch podcasts on YouTube. If most of them say no, then don't bother. Don't add more work to yourself. Focus instead on the things that are actually going to increase the traffic to the podcast that you already have. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, send me a DM on Instagram. That's where I mostly hang out, and it's mostly in my DMs. (laughs) So you won't really find me on stories lately just because I've been so busy with work. But come send me a DM. Let me know what you got from this episode. Don't forget, we do have the membership open right now. You can go to alishagalati.com slash join. We'll have the link in the show notes. And this month we are talking, and it's August, we're talking about how to sell your own products and services on your podcast. Next month in September, we're talking about planning out three months of podcast content. So gearing up, getting ready for that holiday and ensuring that you have all your content planned out. And then in October, we're talking about the number one way to double your downloads. I'm very excited about that. That's going to be a fun month, but that one's all about pitching to be on other people's podcasts, how to do it strategically without being a creep and doing it so that you get the results that you want. All right, until next time, have a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Listeners to Leads. 
If you found something in this episode valuable, I would really appreciate it if you shared it with a friend who you know would also get value from it. Want to send me a message? My favorite place to hang out is Instagram. You can find me at alicia.galati. Let me know what your favorite takeaway was from the episode. And don't forget, turning those listeners into leads is actually easy.